So you want to get into University of Vermont? Well, I am here to help you do just that. My name is Craig Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, which is also linked below this video to learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout your college admissions process. University of Vermont in beautiful Burlington, Vermont, is a school that will become increasingly selective with each passing year because it has instituted recently early decision. And anytime a college institutes early decision as one of its application plans, it becomes increasingly sophisticated in its enrollment management techniques, thus increasing its yield rates. So what does this mean for you? Well, let's go tip by tip through the things you can and should be doing in order to give yourself the very best shot of getting in to University of Vermont. Tip number one, don't do the minimum, do the maximum. What do I mean by that? Before you even set foot in your 12th grade year or your senior year in high school, you've already actually completed the bulk of what matters to a school like University of Vermont, whether you realize it or not, i.e. they're gonna be looking at your transcript and carefully. And when I talk about your transcript, it goes back all the way to the beginning of ninth grade. They want to see what are your final grades in ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th grade to determine whether or not you would be a strong academic fit for this particular institution. So when I say don't do the minimum, do the maximum, don't do the minimum you need to do to graduate within your school district or within your particular school. Because if you do that, you're going to be, unfortunately, not someone who stands out in a positive way for the admissions committee at University of Vermont. Instead, try to do the maximum. And what I mean by that is for all four years in high school, you should be enrolled in a minimum of five core academic subjects that are college prep in nature, a math, a English, a history slash social science, a lab science, as well as a foreign language. If you can do that for all four years in high school, you're gonna be in a far better position than a lot of applicants applying to University of Vermont many of whom may not even have one or two years of a foreign language or may only have one or two years of a science depending on their state's requirements in order to graduate high school. So if you could just do four, five core courses every year, you're already going to have a huge leg up on your competition when you're applying as a 12th grade student to the University of Vermont, regardless of if you're applying early decision, early action, or regular. Tip number two, and of course, by the way, do well in those classes. Don't just take all those classes and get C's. If you can take all those classes and get A's in them, you're going to be very likely to get accepted. And you can almost not watch the rest of this video because you still have a very good shot of getting in. But if you really want to seal the deal, let's watch the rest of this video. Tip number two, even though it is a test optional institution, University of Vermont is, I would still suggest that if you have SAT scores in the high 1200s or higher, you send those scores to University of Vermont. Uh, you know, again, similar equivalency with the ACT if you're in the high 20s, any number in the 30s, absolutely send that composite score if you're sending the ACT uh, because those are scores that are going to impress the admissions committee and be a net positive for your application. Even in a test optional environment, I would send those scores. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. Just because a school is test optional does not mean that you can't send your scores if they would be a net positive and a value added to your overall application. Tip number three, even though University of Vermont does not allow you currently to upload an extracurricular resume to its supplement to the common application, I would strongly recommend that you still draft a full unabridged extracurricular resume about yourself that details all of the extracurricular accomplishments and achievements you have collected for yourself since the summer after eighth grade. The reason why it's important to create this unabridged extracurricular resume about yourself is because you still have an opportunity beyond the Common Apps Activities page to elaborate on your extracurricular activities in the Common Applications Writing page specifically within the additional information section of the writing page. This is below the Common App essay. I would strongly recommend that if you have more details to share about one or more extracurricular activities that you've already mentioned on the activities page or that just did not fit onto the activities page at all because maybe you have more than 10 activities, that you infuse those details into the additional information section of the Common App's writing page so that you do not sell yourself short. The University of Vermont's admissions team will review the content you put in that additional information section, and if it's valuable for them, it could absolutely help your application. Tip number four, um, I, by the way, in tip number three, I'm rushing ahead today, but in tip number three with these, this resume, 
Um, if you would like to learn how to develop the resume correctly, I would strongly recommend that you take my short course, which is extremely cheap. It's linked below this video. It is how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume. You can purchase it over at Gum Road. It is a very quick course. I think it's under an hour. And long story short, you can absolutely learn how to structure your extracurricular resume in such a way that you will be able to copy and paste most likely most, if not all, of your extracurricular exploits into that additional information section, no problem. After you take that course, you'll know the format, you'll know how to do it well so that you can be in the best position possible. If for whatever reason you have a 900-word extracurricular resume by the end of that process of drafting your extracurricular resume, and only 650 of those words fit into the additional information section of the Common Apps Writing page, then you can always try your hand at simply emailing a PDF or Word resume to your admissions officer who covers your region for University of Vermont and ask them politely if they would be so kind as to add that PDF or attached Word document in that email to your overall application file, and many times they will do just that. Uh, many colleges are willing to add supplementary information to your file if it is, again, information that adds greater context about what you've been up to over your high school career, and an extracurricular resume would certainly help you do that. Tip number four, let's talk about how to apply, when to apply to University of Vermont. University of Vermont has recently instituted early decision as one of its application plans. Just so you know, early decision is a binding agreement. The only way you can get out of an early decision acceptance is if University of Vermont does not meet what you thought was your true need, or if University of Vermont does not accept you to your first choice major in your application, or uh, you can also get out of it, of course, if you get deferred to regular decision and then get accepted in regular decision, of course, it's no longer binding. But overall, it's a tool that colleges use, early decision is, in order to yield more of the students who ultimately get into a particular college or university, and thus over time, lower its overall acceptance rate as they become, as I mentioned earlier in this video, more sophisticated in terms of how they manage the application pool. Why does this matter in this context of this particular video? Well, the acceptance rate for early decision students is higher at University of Vermont. It will remain higher for the foreseeable future. So if University of Vermont is your top choice institution and you know you would go if accepted, this is a no-brainer. Apply to University of Vermont by its November 1st early decision deadline. You apply by November 1st, you get all of your materials in within a week of November 1st, and you will hear of your admissions decision by the latest late December. And if you get in, what a Christmas gift. What is a, what a new, new Year's gift. You've gotten into your first choice school. You're going to University of Vermont. You're binded to go all as well. If you're not 100% sure University of Vermont is your first choice, but it's still one of your top choices and you want to do your very best of getting into University of Vermont, I would still strongly suggest applying early, but not early decision, rather early action. Early action is also currently a November 1 deadline. You also will hear by New Year's Day at the latest of whether or not you've been accepted during your senior year, and you have until May 1st to inform University of Vermont in that scenario of whether or not you would want to attend. Uh, so that gives you a little more, more wiggle room, but it also still demonstrates interest to University of Vermont that you are a serious applicant. You can get your ducks in a row early enough to get your full, beautiful application in and all supporting materials by uh, the first week of November. November 1st is the official deadline, but materials are required within about 10 or 11 days of that. So you still want to try to get everything by Halloween so you feel good about it. You can go into November confident that you've submitted a beautiful application to University of Vermont, either as ED or EA, and you'll hear by New Year's Day of your senior year. What a great feeling to know if you've gotten in before uh, the second half of your senior year has even begun. I would recommend both of those options over regular decision. Regular decision is where in the coming years and in the coming admission cycles, University of Vermont will be increasingly winnowing down the number of students they accept for regular decision in response to the fact that they're uh, banking basically larger and larger percentages of students by early decision. So as a result, increasingly there's going to be a bifurcation acceptance rate at the school like University of Vermont, where early decision becomes far easier to get into and regular decision becomes far harder to get into. So if University of Vermont is at the top of your list, try your very best to get an application in early decision or early action. It's up to you and your personal narrative, your personal situation. But again, if it was my first choice, I would certainly apply early decision all other things being equal so I could bind them and bind myself and be done with this process by the first day of the next year of my senior year. So that's, you know, January. All right, next tip. University of Vermont does have an optional essay that you can write. Now, this is beyond the Common App essay. I have some Common App essay tips 
below this video linked to previous videos that I've done all about the Common Application Essay and how to strategize which prompt to pick and how to make that essay as strong as very possible. If you want more tips, then you can find in the videos linked below. Of course, again, work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Go to my website, collegemeister.com. But right now, I want to focus specifically on the supplemental options for essays on University of Vermont supplement to the Common Application. Again, this is optional. So in the scheme of things, many University of Vermont applicants won't even attempt to complete this optional essay because it is just that optional. But anytime you see an optional essay, I strongly recommend you complete it because that's you stepping up to the plate and saying, I'm serious about this application. I want to give myself and them another opportunity to learn more about me. And so I strongly recommend that if you're in it to win at University of Vermont, that you're going to complete that optional essay. You have up until 500 words to write a new essay, at least currently, and I could change that number in the future, but at least currently they give you 500 words on their supplemental essay, on their supplement to the common application. And these are the prompts. You have to choose one of these five prompts to respond to in the University of Vermont supplemental optional essay. Prompt number one, why UVM? That's simple enough. So hopefully that turns into a love letter about why specifically you're attracted to University of Vermont academically, extracurricularly, pre-professionally, uh, and, and you want to structure that essay in a manner where you have a nice introduction paragraph with a thesis, then you support that thesis in the body, and then you close with a conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis. That's simple enough. If you really love University of Vermont, you should obviously do your research in also self-reflection so that you can put together a really personalized essay that makes the admissions committee at University of Vermont realize that you are a perfect fit for them and they are a perfect fit for you. But maybe you don't want to do a more vanilla type essay like that. Maybe you want to respond to prompt number two and talking about flavors of ice cream and others. Uh, here we go with the Ben and Jerry's question. Option two is established in Burlington, Vermont. Ben and Jerry's is synonymous with both ice cream and social change. The Save Our Swirled flavor raises awareness of climate change and the I do, I do, or I do, I do, uh, celebrates marriage equality. If you worked alongside Ben and Jerry, what charitable flavor would you develop and why? So this is sort of a creative essay, but also helps them gain insight into your value system, your character, your philosophy on life or a particular topic that's important to you. You create a flavor that's sort of a play on words, but you explain what the backstory is why that particular hot button issue or social change issue or social justice topic is really important to you. So that's a wonderful way in which you can share more about your value system. And I would still recommend, since you have a good number of words to work with here, if they maintain the 500 word limit, that you still try to connect it back to how you see yourself pursuing that topic, that that uh, particular uh, charitable flavor in some way, shape or form as a student at University of Vermont, because that, if you will, would be the cherry on top, where you don't just do sort of a tangential essay talking about the flavor and why that topic is important to you, but then you, you circle back to how you would also maybe pursue that in at least a few sentences somewhere uh, in that particular essay. If you can't get to it anywhere else, that would be the point at which in the conclusion you can say something new um, and you can connect it back to how, you, in the meantime, if that flavor doesn't get actually produced, you would still pursue working on that particular topic, a charitable idea, whatever, um, at University of Vermont, Vermont in this way, shape, or form. Prompt option number three, University of Vermont is a community that celebrates the unique identity of every student, faculty, and staff member. Tell us how your identities have shaped the way you interact with the world. You only have 500 words here, so you can't talk about all of your identities. So don't get too snookered by that particular plural of the word identity in that prompt, I would pick one element of your identity if you're going to go with this prompt um, to talk about how that's informed you in one way, shape, or form and how you interact with the world, whether it's your race, your religion, some other element of your identity, maybe your the state you're from, the country you're from. Uh, pick one and go deep with it as opposed to saying you are a, uh, you know, Native American, uh, overweight, uh, blind, uh, two-spirit individual. I mean, that's a lot to, to fit into one particular 500-word uh, essay. Try to pick one of those identities and really flesh that out 
as much as you can. That would be my recommendation, at least, so that you can provide them depth over breadth and quality over quantity. Uh, and again, I would still recommend that somewhere probably in the last third or so of that uh, essay you write, if you do choose prop number three, you connect back to how you see your identity playing out on the University of Vermont campus in a way, way where they can be confident that you're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue to have that identity uh, inform how you interact with the world as a student, not just on University of Vermont's campus, but also in the greater Burlington area. Prop number four, from the Green Mountains to Lake Champlain, to our campus, University of Vermont students are inspired by our location to think about their relationship to the environment. What does your relationship with the environment look like? So this is tailor-made to students who really care about the environment a great deal and have something that they want to share uh, in terms of their backstory of how they've maybe interacted with the environment, why it inspires them, why they're inspired to improve the environment in one way, shape, or form. And again, this is tailor-made to not just a backward-looking essay, but a forward-looking essay about how you see that particular relationship. Maybe you love to recycle. Maybe you believe in the clean drinking water is more important than ever before. How do you see that interest, that passion area, playing out over your four years at University of Vermont in Burlington? Don't just look in the past and use this as a narrative resume entry. That would be a disaster. Instead, talk about the fact this is what you've done so far, or this is what you thought about so far, and this is how your interest or relationship with the environment would play out as a student at University of Vermont. And if you have space, you can even say, and after University of Vermont, I believe getting a degree from University of Vermont would help me continue to develop this relationship and improve the environment in this way, shape, or form in the future. That would obviously require some talent to get to that point in 500 words, but you can do it uh, if you take the time necessary to make sure every word counts in your final draft. And then finally, prompt number five that you can choose as your optional University of Vermont essay to write in response to is if you could pick one song to be the soundtrack of your life, what would it be? What is your connection to that song? I like this prompt the least of the five prompt options for your optional essay because it's the one that could seduce a student to most not speak about University of Vermont at all. And I really encourage you to connect whatever you're writing about in this optional essay back to University of Vermont. And this is the one where I feel like you're on the thinnest ice there. You're more likely to just go off on a complete tangent and just stay stuck in your narcissistic head. Uh, and a lot of these prompts are already made for students who are relatively self-centered <laughs> in the sense that if you want to talk all about yourself, you can, and you will never relate it back to uh, them, i.e. the college you're applying to, but I recommend always making that marriage within the prompt or within your response if you possibly can. So this one could be difficult to do that with, but you can of course do it if you have the goal in mind. And so I'm telling you, if you do choose this prompt to respond to, and you do have a song that you really love, okay, explain why you feel connected to that song or why you feel like your life in many ways mirrors the, the lyrics of that song, but then try again to paint a picture with words of how that song takes you directly through Burlington and directly through the University of Vermont campus so that by the time they finish reading your essay in response to this prompt, they feel like this song, this student, University of Vermont, this is meant to be. Uh, if you can't do that in this particular prompt, then maybe you've bitten off more than you can chew and you should maybe focus on one of the other prompts because the other prompts allow you to make more of a compelling closing argument as to why you are a good fit for Vermont and why Vermont is a great fit. For you. But if you can do all of this that I just talked about in this video, I think you're going to be in a really great shape to get into University of Vermont and you have used your time wisely by watching this video. If you like this video, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I produce videos about how to get into particular colleges whenever I have time. And increasingly in the fall, I do not have time because I'm helping students one-on-one -on -one get into college one-on-one. But uh, if you like this channel, watch my back catalog of videos as well because there's a lot of great content I've been producing since about 2016 on this channel. And if you, again, want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I strongly encourage you to go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about how to do just that. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister, the College Meister. Stay safe and stay well, and great luck in terms of your application to University of Vermont. I think you're going to get in. Best of luck.